talking now. Rishi Sunak has apparently been reported to the police uh, by the Aleppo party, it says here, for a joke about Nicola Sturgeon. Let's have a listen to it. The forces of separatism are in retreat across our country. Nicola Sturgeon wanted to go down in the history books as the woman who broke up our country, but it now looks like she may go down for very different reasons. <laughs> Now, I thought that was quite funny, but also I thought it was quite sort of... Uh, sorry, I should introduce you to Alex Salmon, who's here with us. Alex, a very good uh, morning to you. Welcome to the brand-new, uh, beautifully <laughs> appointed Independent Republic of Migrate. It's totally amazing. C can I be in front of the blue and white... You, I mean, we should have had a special blue and white makeover yeah, for you, obviously. That would be so for, nice. For Scotland. But, I mean, I must admit, the first thing that jumped into my head <clears> was <throat> the fact that everybody in Scotland never, ever wants to talk about this Nicola Sturgeon police inquiry because they all say, oh, it's a police inquiry, we can't say anything. But have, is it your lot that have actually made the complaint then? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, whatever when we get what the have chance, you done that for? we get the chance to complain about Rishi Sunak, yeah. we just take the opportunity. Okay, so it's not actually about right. serving justice then. Uh, well, no, well, it's actually a serious point about serving justice, and that is in Scotland, of course, the the contempt of court rules they kick in at the time of arrest, right. not at the time of charging mm. in other less efficient legal systems. Like the one in England. Uh, and Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm not sure the Prime Minister was fully aware of that. Yes. But he should have been, of course. I mean, he is, after all, the Prime Minister. See, anybody, anybody, even Nicola Sturgeon, is entitled to due process. Mm. Not saying that Nicola was particularly hot in due process herself. But, she's but, not known for that. No, she's not. But, but nonetheless, she's still entitled yes. to it. And the, frankly, the Prime Minister should know better. I mean, he's not one of life's natural comedians, that has to be well, said. Well, I said, funnily well. enough, before uh, he got up to speak, I made my own little speech about what you should talk about, and he talked about a couple of the things that I suggested, but not all. Uh, he didn't talk about crime at all, which he should have okay, been. OK, I, I want to get this right, Mike. Yeah. Uh, are you actually speech-writing for Rishi Sunak? No, 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 but I was able to um, elucidate my thoughts on this very show before he got up Oh, I see, he was watching so, and then copied... Yeah, of course, it. yeah, but, right. I mean, he didn't take advantage of everything I, that I suggested. But what I did say, um, Emma Wolfe was sitting here with me, I said the one... The two things politicians shouldn't do. Um, one is try and make jokes, unless they're yeah. quite good at it, yeah. which they very, very mm. rarely are. And two, talk about football. Um, now, I know in your case you're a proper football fan, yeah. so you can. But people I'm like Richie Sunak claims to be... He's, he says he's a Southampton fan. But, you know, yeah. they should basically stay away from sport and stay away from, from jokes, because, generally speaking, they're not very good at telling them. But then, of course, there's other things. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here fighting... Because Scottish nationalists, that's what we do. We, we sit here and, and fight. Mm. Uh, and can, can you now applaud me? Because I want to be applauded. Right, well, do you stand up and fight, though? Because well, I know, I mean... I was, Penny Morden, I, I, I was watching... See, see, there's a difference... I mean, I, I'm always struck. I, I, don't, I don't want this to, to, you know, to sound big headed or anything, but there, there's so many politicians who can't actually do the things that are meant to be things that politicians do. Mm. I mean, it... Not everybody can be, you know, Lloyd George right. in terms of speaking style, but everybody can be competent. Yes. And therefore, it's quite interesting when you be people who do things which are not competent. Yes. And Penny Mordaunt's speech was incompetent. Well, we've got a little clip, because I want to see that. I, I will never tire of watching this. I might play it several more times during the show. Let's have a look. And when our nation stands up and fights, other nations stand up and fight, and they stand up and fight for the things upon which the entire progress of humanity depends. Freedom. That is what conservatives do. That is what this nation does. Have courage. Bring hope. Stand up and fight. Stand up and fight. Thank you, conference. <laughs> I, I said, That's the new thing. I'm withdrawing everything. I, I now realise, yeah. having, having seen it for the second time, this is deadpan parody. Yeah. The, this woman is a total master of deadpan she parody. Is. Uh, and the way she applauds herself, yeah. to, she leads her own applause. But, but, but also, in her head, do you think she's hearing applause that she isn't there? Because she's speaking as though it's a crescendo. You know, I thought I was but, likening it earlier a bit like the sort of the, the, the Agincourt speech um, from Henry V. Because, <laughs> you know, but unfortunately, there was no, there was no cheering in between. Yeah, there but, was a pause, but then nothing. Well, Shakespeare didn't write in that bit, you know, when, he, when he's, he's on his horse and says, applaud you. Yeah. <laughs> Why yeah, are you applauding me? And men in England safe for bed and people at the Tory conference who should have woken up by now should right. be... 
I mean, it's a bit like opening a sham. Well, this is a Tory analogy. Opening right. a champagne bottle, and <laughs> not, there's no pot. There's no pot. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that is a very good analogy. Because but... it's quite difficult. I mean, see, Penny Morden gets great rave reviews uh, because she's leader of the house. Yes. Right? Uh, and so she gets, she has all this stuff prepared for her. So you get some heartless Scottish nationalist, and they are pretty heartless, has mm. to be said. Stands up, asks her a question and business questions off a Thursday. Yeah. And she goes like camper van, camper van, camper van, yeah. nodding heads, donkeys, Tory bike benches, convulse themselves in laughter. Mm. The Daily Express says how brilliant she is. She is quite an estimable character, I think. But you must, we, we should be able to expect that, that politicians should be able to make competent speeches. Yes. This is a kind of minimum, it's like a driving test. Mm. Now, if, if Penny Mordaunt had been sitting her speech driving test, she'd have been failed. Yes, she would. Um, but we'll come back to that in a minute, because I want to reverse uh, back slightly over what we just did. Um, I don't mean that, obviously, metaphorically or literally. Um, to the uh, report that you've made to the police, because aren't you wasting police time with this nonsense, though? Well, I mean, if the, the police have got enough to do, haven't they? The, oh, well, if the police think... It, well, I mean, given some of the other stuff they're doing, this seems to be pretty serious, to tell you the truth, Mike. But, I mean, if they think it's a waste of time, they'll say we think it's a so waste of time. So are you alleging that he has made some contempt of court? Oh, well, I mean, in terms of some of the prosecutions we've seen in Scotland, I mean, there have been some extraordinary prosecutions uh, for, you know, people making remarks about this, that and the next mm. thing, and particularly on contempt of court. Right. I mean, there's people being... You know, well, in the case of Craig Murray, sent to jail right. uh, for what was... <laughs> it looked to many people like a, a trumped-up charge. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and you know, so if it's sauce for the goose, sauce for the gander... But if I was to sit here and, and literally accuse Nicola Sturgeon of all manner of things to do with this police inquiry, are you saying that I could be technically charged by the police in Scotland? Uh, in terms of contempt of court, absolutely, because yeah. the contempt of court kicks in uh, at the time of arrest in Scotland, not the time of being charged. No, I get the time that. of arrest. No, I get that. And Mike, look, there is a kind of serious point. You, I mean, you're always frustrated because you're a journalist, a very good one, if I may say so. Very kind. But you're you're a journalist, so you want people to absolutely be definitive, to say things, to actually mm. you know, say something interesting. But when people might potentially face criminal charges, there are limitations, mm. and sensible people should stick to them. Yes. And you know, the person who's meant to be most sensible in these things are First Ministers and Prime Ministers. Yes. And the fact that Nicola Sturgeon herself was free and easy about mm. these things is no excuse for the mm. Prime Minister to be... Yeah. Find another joke. Also, I mean... Tell a honest, joke about a camp of Well, I mean, he told whatever. another joke about Keir Starmer, um, <coughs> which was OK, but, I mean, the thing is, there's nothing in it for him, really, to make a joke about Nicola Sturgeon. I mean, she's already out of the game. You know, she's not any danger to him. She's not going to somehow reunite Scotland behind her. She's not suddenly going to have another referendum and Scotland's suddenly going to become independent. None of that's happening. And that's a good point there, actually. I mean, you know, by and large, I think it's bad form in politics to kick people when they're down. Yeah. I mean, they might get back up and kick I you think back. Genuine, I think generally it's bad form to kick people when they're down. Mm. I mean, I would generally say, I would say that. On the basis they get back up and thump you. Well, there is, I mean, even if you're only talking about your own self preservation, it's so like it's in this business that we are in, it's never a good idea um, to kind of. Um, I, can't, I was about to say the word there, but uh, to dump on high from, from somebody yeah. that you think is lesser than you. But because wonder, you never know I, how it's all going to end up. I mean, I, I'm just trying try, to try, try get my head round uh, this decisive leadership from, uh, from Rishi Sunak. Mm. I mean, apparently you are now decisive in leadership terms by not doing things. Right. Right, so the, the way to <laughs> emphasise your decisive leadership is to change your mind and say, I'm not doing this, mm. I'm not doing that. I mean, where could this end? Yes. I mean, the Prime Minister could end up doing absolutely nothing at all. Yeah. And I'm sure he'd be brilliant at it. Well, there are some who say that's exactly what he is doing, <laughs> nothing at all. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. already accomplished that. But so now what we'd like to see uh, is actually something rather than nothing, because I agreed with him that <laughs> he should do away with HS2. <laughs> um, I don't understand why they're bothering <laughs> to spend a load more money, though, um, up in the north of England, because as somebody pointed out to me yesterday, you know, there are other things that need fixing. We found out today, for example, this is the most <laughs> difficult country to, to get housing in. Um, there's going to be a load more refugees on our streets because they're soon going to be granted refugee status, but we've got nowhere to put them. So nobody knows what's going to go on there. We've got crime <laughs> up and down every high street in the land. I witnessed some myself this week, shoplifting going on <laughs> in my local shopping centre, people getting stabbed to death on the streets, people having their watches stolen, cars stolen. You know, there's a lot of stuff Mate. going on, and none of that was addressed yesterday. Mate, I'm convinced that, far from just being the speechwriter, why, why, why have a halfway house? You should just be the Prime Minister. Well, I mean, that, a lot got, of people I mean, would there's, like that. There's a, the agenda... It's not there's... good enough money, though, that's the trouble. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, but you can write your memoirs afterwards. I could, yeah. But all the things my, you didn't do. My actual do. memoirs are far more interesting, I must say. 